I like that song that Fred Hammond has sung a while back. I can't sing like him, mm -hmm. but I understand what he was saying. Yeah. Yeah. Jamal, he says, just to be close yes, to yes, you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just to be close to you. Just to be close to you is my desire. Just to be close to you. You know the song, sing along. Just to be close to you. Just to be close to you. Is my desire one more time just to be close to you? Just to be close to you, just to be close to you is my desire just to be. Close to you. Come on, man. come on, sing, sing it. Just to be close to you. Just to be close to you is my desire. That's a that's, that's a lot in that song because I know. To draw closer to God, that in Him He has everything. And I know we're in a time and a season; it's never nothing new. We want to draw close to everything and everybody else, but God. And that's a personal song. And you ask yourself, Pastor, how do I draw closer to God? You ever asked yourself the question? It starts with the desire. It doesn't start with the place. It starts with the desire. You, we, you and I have to desire to be close to God. And even if nobody else desires it, it should be our desire, your desire, to draw closer to Him. And as we learn in Sunday school, if I truly desire to draw closer to God, then there's something about me that will fall off. There's some old things that will start to do what? Die. For in my desire to draw closer to God will not cause me to embrace darkness and sin. If it's truly my desire to draw closer to him, be a holy God, a righteous God, then there's something that I must do. And he says that I must sacrifice. This is not the message, but it ties in with the message. Do, do you desire to draw closer to the Lord? Yes. Hallelujah. That's just your own choice. I'm going to help somebody today. I know you've been taught. It's not pastors. My, it's not my, my calling to make you draw closer to the Lord. Come on, y'all better get this. If you're not close to the Lord, it's not the pastor's fault. It's, 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 it has to be because he says it's my desire. So it's my desire to draw nigh unto God. It, it's not my responsibility to get you to draw nigh to him. My responsibility is to feed the sheep. But it's your choice. And, and, how, and how do I know? How do I know? How do I know when I'm close or getting close? Love. There's love. Because God is love. And, and I know that we in a time now where we believe that love is has an expiration. Look, look around. Look around that there's no love. The word of God says that that the lawlessness will abound. Because of love, 
but wax cold is that lawlessness will bow because we have no love. I'm, I'm not talking about the world. I'm talking about in the house of God. That's right. That's right. Yes, sir. That's right. Amen. Yes, sir. Because he loved divine love. Agape love is sacrifice. That's right. See, even when, even when, and we don't believe this, but the scripture, even when God repented, mm -hmm. that he made man, he still loved them. And we don't think God repented. Mm -hmm. That we, he, we don't believe that mankind had got so bad that God said, I wish I never even created them. Yeah, that's right. That's that's right. right. Uh, it's in the scripture that's now. Right. But I know that y'all, some of us ain't been taught that. Yeah. No. We haven't been taught that God said, I got fed up with mankind. Mm -hmm. I, I wish I had never even created them. Yeah. That's an old covenant. That they, they, their love had become so, their hearts had become so wicked. Murdering, stealing, and killing, blasphemy, not honoring his name. It's God. He said, it, it, became, it made me so sick that I wish I never created them. Y'all yeah. Yeah, know that's in the word, right? Yes. 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 And so he says, but there was a, a servant who pleaded for the people. So I know, I know they deserve it. But Lord, if you do this to them, if, if you wipe them out, there's some outsiders that's going to think that you are not a good God. I'm talking about love. And don't you know the reason why God has not wiped us out? It's because he loves us. Yes. And he is not going to allow his name to be mocked among the heathens. That's right. Yes, Amen. sir. That's right. Amen. Somebody better get this. Yes. And so the song says, just to be close to you. And when we start talking about love, we put love all on all kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Y'all heard this before. The message is responding to God's love, but we got to understand that there's a difference because God's love is not all about emotions and feelings. That's carnal. Because as soon as I stop feeling that I love you, I'm going to stop talking to you. I'm going to stop doing for you. But God's love is not like that. The word of God says, and yet while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So you know, even in while we were rebelling, God says, I still love you. Y'all yeah. better get this. Because you, you, you and I have to stop listening to Satan. Come on. It ain't TV. Come on. It ain't the radio. It ain't music. It ain't all that. Those are just conduits. We gotta stop listening to the enemy that, that, that by telling you that you are not worth anything. Or that your love is in you and all this other stuff. That's right. Yeah. Hmm. Ah, your love is God. God is love. And God says, I love you so much, I'm going to show you what, I, what, I, what I've done for you. I've sent my only begotten son. Yeah. Jesus the Christ to do what? To pay the penalty. That's right. That you owe. He said, I sent him because I love you. I know you don't deserve it, but I love you. And God says, you know what? I'm omniscient, omnipotent, omnipotent. Matter of fact, I know you're gonna you gonna you gonna leave me. Yeah, yeah. Oh man. Yeah. I know. God says, I know all things. I know you're gonna leave me. I know you're gonna go back out there in the world. You're gonna taste my love. You're gonna go right, you're gonna go back and do it. I know, but guess what? I still love you. And that love that I have for you is gonna draw you. It's gonna cause you to realize that guess what? My love is real. Yeah. Amen. Isn't that a good God to know that? Because we, we had to point, somebody had done something to us, even in the family, you know, we, we, we <laughs> But God says, God says, I know you. Come, come on, somebody need to know this. Somebody know. See, because what, what happened, Pastor, what are you doing? I'm, I'm just trying to wake us up. <laughs> God knew you was going to leave him. He knew you was going to go back into him. He knew that you and I were going to com confess to him. Confess Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, accept him. And he knew that we was going to. He knew it. But love, but love. Thank you, Lord. Is, is calling someone right now. Yes. He says, I know you deserve it, but the blood. Yes. Thank you, Lord. 
But don't take it for granted now. That's right. That's right. That's right. Don't, don't abuse the, the, the love that I have for you. So he says, just to be close to you. And, and if you've never experienced divine love, see, see, many of us are broken because of carnal love. You know, love that someone said that they love you and they stopped loving you. And like, oh, God says, but I'm talking about divine love. He said, if you've never experienced it, then you really don't know what you're missing. And if you never experienced it, then you don't know what you're missing. Because all I do is I base my love on my emotions, the five senses. Right? And many of y'all are saying right now today, I don't feel love, Pastor. He said, because you haven't <laughs> read my word. Huh. Mm. Love is love is not a feeling. In, in, the, in the natural realm, it is. God says, I love you. If you don't get anything else out of this message, God says, I love you. Even when you sin against me, I love you. But let me tell you something. In order to receive this love, there's something you and I must do. We can't conjure it up in our mind and chat it a minute. We have to repent. Yes. 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 You ever heard somebody say, well, if you're really sorry, you ever have somebody offend you so many times, he kept telling you, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. but it didn't it didn't penetrate anymore? Because right, right. you said, if you're sorry, why you keep doing right, it? Right, right, right. Thank God he ain't like us. Right. I'm trying to help somebody today and myself. Because you're waiting on that person to say they love you. Yes. And God says, I already love you. Guess how much I love you? I said, my only, I sacrificed my son for his son. And he says, the only thing that he is requiring for us to do, Brother Leo, is to believe that by faith. Yes. So even when I don't feel love, I'm loved. For God so loved the world. That's that he gave what? His only begotten son. That whosoever believeth what? In him. Should not. No, that should not. Is. You got a choice. He said, if you believe on the name of Jesus Christ, he said, you should not perish, but you have what? Everlasting life. So it's not the life here in the natural that I'm pursuing. It's everlasting life that I have in Christ Jesus that I already know by faith that guess what? God, as we say, guide me. Amen. Amen. That's right. So he says, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. So in other words, God didn't send Jesus Christ into the world to condemn you. So if you're feeling, experiencing condemnation, that's not God's love. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Matter of fact, let me help someone. When you walked into these doors and you said you felt some, some guilt. Mm. Anybody? Don't say that. You felt Because God's presence is here. That's it don't matter what who you, you know, God's presence is here. So he's moving right now upon your life. He's trying to let you know that I love you. But when you feel that guilt, that conviction, that's God's love. But but you and I gotta make a decision right now. Either I'm gonna pursue him, I'm a desire to be close to him or not. We, we gotta get back to God's love. His love is real. And so God is saying today, I'm calling. I'm calling you. Can you hear me? I'm not looking at what you've done and what you're doing now. It's my spirit is convicting you right now to come. Come. He said, come. Come to the pastor. No, come to me. And, and he says and receive this gift my only begotten son and receiving this gift guarantees you and I by faith that we are children of the most high God Thank you, Lord. sealed with the Holy Spirit of yes, promise yes. accepted significant and secured in him 
And that's not just a quote, that's right. Ephesians yeah. chapter yeah. 1 through 3. Yes, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He's showing us how much he loves us. And love draws. And love allows you to see, your, see yourself. Because let me tell you something, I'm going to mess you up right now. You don't deserve his love. That's right. That's right. I don't deserve it. We don't deserve it. But he loves us. And he's saying, come unto me right now and receive my love. It's personal. And it's love that God has for us supersedes the love that you have for your mother, your brother, your sister, your sons, your daughters, your wife, and your husband. Even the love for this country. He says, because guess what? That's going to fade. That's right. Right. Ain't that something? And you know what God's love is because you can experience it. And God says, even in your brokenness. Come on, y'all better get this. Don't worry about it. I'm just being obedient. Because that's what's wrong with this. Because I'm going to tell you something. When you love God the Father, Elohim, He don't. you don't have to be pumped up to do nothing. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Come on now. And you got to prove your love to him either. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. you just have to obey his love. Yeah. And many of us today has been passed down for hundreds of years. You got to prove your love to me. I says, I love you. Even if you don't love me, I still love you. That's right. And love is waiting for someone right now. So don't blame nobody. Don't even blame yourself. Just say, Father God, forgive me. And I receive the gift of love that came through your only begotten son, Jesus Christ, who was born from a virgin mother by the name of Mary, who knew no man, who lived a sinless life, who walked this earth, was tempted by everything that we're tempted with. And the ultimate temptation that he was tempted with was to deny you, Father. But he stayed the course. And he prayed in the garden, Father God, if it's your will, remove this bitter cup from me. Nevertheless, that's Jesus' love to his Father, not my will. Come on, we, we're talking right now. Yes, See, the reason why we're, 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 we're not embracing God's love because we, we want our will to be done. I go. <laughs> Jesus says, not my will, but your will be done. He was marched from judgment hall to judgment hall. Spit on, despised, beaten, slapped, punched, for you. And you weren't even born. That's what love does. It wasn't based upon what you do or will do. God says, I love you even before you were born. The same Jesus. Can you see him? You see the enemy right now? Torturing you with your thoughts. Torturing you with your past. You, you, you have a desire to go, but he's walking on the side of you saying, don't do it. Putting it on your heavy right now. Jesus is telling somebody, just press. Don't you know Jesus Christ did that? Do you see him? Cross on his back. And they're mocking him. And Satan is in the midst saying, don't do that for them. They don't deserve it. They're going to betray you. They're going to go to other gods. Jesus says, no. Do you see him? See, that's the thing. We don't see him. We don't see the love of Christ. That's why when we come into his presence, we take it lightly. Because you want me to stir you up. But I just want to rewind the tape for a bit just to let you know what Christ did for us. For you and I. And many fell back. 
But he continued to press. Didn't he say this? He says, didn't I? Could you not what? Watch and pray with me for an hour. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And many of us got God right now. Yeah. Time. And Jesus said, he told him. So the disciples said, couldn't you not just worship me for an hour? Couldn't you not just praise me for an hour? Don't you know what I'm getting ready to go? Couldn't you not? He said they fell asleep. That's spiritual. I told you, you don't think it's spiritual? Wait till you leave here. You don't get a burst of energy. But I'm going to tell you, Jesus pressed for you. He took him in. Body, blood, beaten bad, bloodied and bruised. And, and they laid him on a cross. Because see, they had to, the cross, the tree. I know this is a tree. Yeah. Maybe, let me help somebody out. Yeah, it was a tree, but the word of God says it was a cross. Preaching on the cross is what? Foolish to some. So don't get caught up in all that. Say it. Made it out of the tree. The tree, and they laid him on there. They didn't just throw him up there. I mean, for you. And after they had beat him bad, and everybody left him, they laid him down on his tree, in the form of a cross. And they took these long nails, like railroad spikes, like longer than this, made of metal. He drilled it into his wrist. Hammering it. Bow! Bow! And many people just stood there and saying, he getting exactly what he deserved. Bow! Bow! To some people that was in the audience, it was just another crucifixion. He was not the first nor the last. But this was the form of torture and punishment they did. He took another long metal. Pow! Pow! The Bible says he could have called out. He said, Father, go ahead and just take them all out of here. But because he loves you, even before you was formed in your mother's womb, God loved you. They took his feet, put them together, so and they drove that nail between both of his part of his neck up here both of them bow bow he hollered but he never denied the father That's right. I'm trying to help somebody love is suffering God loved you and loved us and in that moment it was nothing good about that feeling That's right. That's right. And if you think love is about a good feeling, Lord help. you are missing the cross. Yes. Yes. And after they finished, they took that tree, the cross, and they stood erect and dropped it in a hole. And his body, the weight of his body just... Yeah. Oh, Jesus. But can't you see the angels telling, God telling the angels, I want you to hold his wrist in place. Yes. Because this sacrifice is going to be whole. Right. I don't want nothing to fall off. Right. Oh, that's, right. Right. that's right. That's right. So they held him and you could just see him mocking him and saying, you deserved it. Can't you see him? Do you see his disciples standing afar off? Say, yeah, we thought we were willing to go, but we fell asleep. Jesus. Uh, we said we were all in for you, Lord, but I don't think we want to do that right there. Can't you see him? Looking at his disciples and yeah. saying, man, I thought they were with me. And, and, and it wasn't done because Satan is vile and wicked. But it was according to the scripture. That, uh, took this spear. Because see, the nails and the, the feet and hand wasn't enough. See, the enemy, thank you, Holy Spirit, he, he wanted he wanted to torture you before he finished. That's right. That's right. You want to quit, don't you? But now he said, nah, I'm going to torture you. I'm going to torture you in your dreams. I'm going to torture you. I'm going to torture you before I take you. I'm going to torture you. You're going to feel like 
But I'm going to torture you, so he torched him. Word of God says they took a spear and they thrust it to his side. And you would think the nails in the hands and the feet were enough, wouldn't you? Crown of thorns, that's enough. You would think that's enough, wouldn't you? But they said, no, we're going to do what's already written. So he pierced it in his side. And this is what happened. Blood and water came out his side. The blood of the Lamb and the living water came out his side. Can you, can you see that? He said, look at him, he thirsts. Because love causes us to suffer and to become thirsty. It says that they took some hyssop, dipped it in a vinegar, and put it in his mouth, and what happened? What did he say? I don't want that. He says, because I'm going to feel all this for you. No, 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 no sedative. No, 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 no pain. He says, I'm gonna take it all for you. I no, don't I don't want that vinegar. I don't want that. I don't want to, I want to experience all of this. So you don't have to experience it. That's right. That's Jesus. right. Thank you, Lord. Then when it was all done, where God says that he looked up first of all at the people, and he took that day for granted. You see, John there and his beloved disciple and his mother Mary watching her son that was given to her from God the Father didn't belong to him I've been sharing that with y'all about your children your children don't belong to you God has just given you a certain time to train them up he looks down at John and looks down at Mary he says Mary, this is your son now. And John, this is your mother. That was family. Then. And then he looked at the people. And, Can't you see them mocking them, Deacon Lawrence? They, they, they thought they won. And don't you know there's people that think they, they think over you, they're looking at you, they think they done won. Yeah. Come on now, because they see you suffering. Now, we're nowhere compared to what Christ is. I'm just trying to bring it to you. That they're watching you suffer and they're thinking they won. Right? <laughs> Y'all better get this. And he could have came off and dealt with him. But he said, no, because that's me doing what I want. But now I'm going to do what the Father says. That's right. This is my point in time. And then he looked around and saw him laughing. You know what he said? He looked up to his father. Come on, this is for somebody today. See, see, because the enemy is tormenting you with unforgiveness. He's tormenting you with the offense. That, that's that. And, and he says, I could just jump off and, you know how we say, we, I could just jump off and don't, don't play with me. I said, no, no, no. This is divine. He says, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. What he was saying was that you and I, at one point before we confessed Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we were in darkness and we were ignorant to God's love. Right, that's right. Yes, sir. That's right. Yes. And he could have yes. finished it all. But he says to you and I, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. And then it says in the word of God that God the Father said, turn to him and said, come home, son. It's time to come. You've finished the mission, the assignment. And after that, he lifted up his eyes to the Father and said, Father, I commend my what? Spirit. Spirit back to you. Word of God says, and his head dropped. He said, it's finished. And it dropped between the locks of his shoulder. He said, it's finished. And then it says that it was customary for them to break the legs 
of those who were crucified. So you got to get in your word. It was customary. Because, you know, sometimes we'll fake it. Many of us are faking Christians. Come on, Jesus, come on. Faking it. Saying the right words. Moving in the right way and saying all this other stuff. He said, but let me tell you something, you're going to be tested. Because God says, I'm looking for the real ones. And many of us are being deceived by some fake ones. How do I know? How do they know they're pure? You know what? When you treat them wrong. Yeah. When you say all kind of manner of things against them, when you lie on them and you start plotting and saying all these other stuff, and when they get back to them, guess what they do? They forgive them. They say, Father, forgive them. But the enemy is saying, no. Pay them back to what they did. You God says, no. Remember what I did for you? But God, they deserve it. He said, no. You're mine now. It says it was customary for them to break the legs of those that they crucified to make sure that they were dead. Yeah, yeah. Anybody had a broken leg, arm before? You weren't smiling when that happened, did you? But before they could break Jesus' leg, he was already gone. And they knew it. And then Joseph Maybe Joseph of Arimathea said, I want his body. Can I have it? He said, yeah, go ahead. Rich man, too. He was a rich man. Took Christ's body and buried him in a borrowed man's tomb. It was customary. Stick with me. And then word got back to the disciples that man Jesus has been crucified all your hope is gone and, and somebody has gotten a report right now and uh, that report caused you to because it does bad news saps not energy but hope that's right. That's it. We'll put that in your notes. That's right. Oh, yes, That's right. It, it, bad news, devastating news doesn't sap your energy. It takes the hope. And so what they were trying to do was, they was trying to get the disciples to do what? Lose hope. Yeah. But thank God for these sisters. Hallelujah. They weren't special. They were just doing what the custom says. Yes. Right. When someone dies. Bringing something to do what? Keep the body smelling. That was, that was doing that. Wasn't, there wasn't no calling from it. They were just doing what they were supposed to. According to their custom. I'm trying to help somebody. They, they were in they were just, and when they went there. But it's amazing to me, people of God, how when Christ died, that the enemies of God told the people this is what I want you to do. I'm going to tell you what the enemies of God did. It's Christ said, resurrected. Guess what the enemies of God said? The enemies of God said, I tell you what, I'll pay you some money if you tell them that their disciples came and got the body. They, 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 these religious folks said, I'll pay you some money. Just tell them that, that he wasn't ready. Tell them that somebody snatched the body. Pastor Mike, what, what are you saying? That's what's happening today. Right? Yep. Yeah. They got believers questioning Come on. if Christ really resurrected from the Come and they tell you, they paying you. Yes, sir. They're gonna tell somebody else it ain't true. Right. Mm -hmm. But he says that they came back and the angels looked at so what you looking for? Mm -hmm. can, can you see? He said, what, what, what are you looking for? They came and they wanted to see, you know what I'm saying? They, they wanted to see this. You gotta get this. They wanted to see this. Because sometimes we can sit in church for 30 years. Come on, come on. Yeah. Hear the word over and over. And all we're doing is memorizing. Yeah, yeah. And we can have some conversation with people. But you and I have never experienced it. Right. And God has said, move from that place right. of familiarity and get to, to the experience of who I am. Because when you truly experience my love, you will never 
He just said, so they went. The angel says, why are you looking for the living amongst the dead? Look what he's telling Deacon Lawrence. He said, listen to me, listen to me. He said, didn't he tell y'all? Right. Right. Not, not the world. Come on now. He wasn't telling this to the world. He said to his disciples, didn't he tell y'all that he was going to do a die and three days later he was going to be what? Didn't he tell you? See, we forget sometimes because the enemy will cause us to forget the promise of God. Yeah. He said, he said, didn't he tell you? They said, yeah, we look straight rushing. Can't you see him? Oh. Peter, all of them running there, trying to yes. look in. Mm. Thank God for those sisters that was in the right place. Yeah. He told them, hold on, you can't touch me now. I haven't ascended to the Father. Go tell my disciples. This was order. Go tell my disciples. That's right. That's right. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Yeah. He didn't say, y'all go out there and go tell them on the mic. He said, no, y'all go out there and go tell them my way. He said, no, no, order, order. These are my disciples. You go back and tell them. And they still didn't believe. Emily still didn't. And guess what Jesus had to do? Because he loved them. He had to show up. Come on, come on, listen to me. Come on, don't wait, don't go to sleep. You got to realize the scripture. He says, even when you didn't believe the disciples got mad. We saw him, we saw him. They're like, you know, can you see them disciples? No, he didn't. Because we saw him hung. We saw him bare. We saw him bare. Jesus said, look, sometimes, even in your unbelief, Leo, get this. Sometimes, even your unbelief, because you know them dark, lonely days. Sometimes, even your unbelief, guess what I'll do? I'll walk through the door just to see you. That's right. Thank you, Lord. He says, because concrete, man, all that, that can't stop me. No matter what is attacking you and I right now, it has no power. He said, let me tell you something. I'll walk through it just to show you what? My hands. I'll walk and show you my feet. I'll let you see it. Thomas doubted. He said, Lord, let me touch you. He didn't say, I don't believe you. He said, no, go ahead and touch me. Because sometimes it takes that side. But love is not going to condemn you because you want to touch him. Jesus. But love is saying, I wish you would just believe you, what I said. Hallelujah. But if you need a touch, yeah, he told Thomas, touch me. And don't you know, he says, I'm leaving now. Word of God says he was seen by over 500 other more people. That's what the word says. So it wasn't just the 12. It was some other people waiting to see. Yes, God. Yes, God. I'm sure they wouldn't. Yeah. They were just followers of Christ. Hallelujah. They, they didn't have <laughs> this behind their name. Yeah, they, they just followed Christ. They're like, Lord, I know. He said, I'm gonna, I gotta show I gotta show up for them too. Before I sin. But he went to the disciples first. Let me tell you something. You're not last and you're not negated. It's just not your time yet. But let me tell you something. You keep holding on, he'll show up for you too. Yes, yes, he will. Then he ascended up to heaven. But what did he tell the disciples to do? So I want you to go back. And gather. Because he made a promise to me. So I'm not going to leave you comfortless. So I want you to go. Because see, when we lose someone, when we lose hope, it, it takes us. It, it's a blow to us. Because they said, no, Jesus, stay here. We believe now. He said, no, hold on for a minute. I, 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 I finished my assignment. Amen. But guess what I'm doing? I'm not going to leave you come. I'm going to send. No. The Father is going to send. That's right. The Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. All these works and miracles you saw me doing, it wasn't about me. It was the Holy Spirit of God working inside this man. Thank you, Jesus. He said, that same Holy Spirit, I'm going to send you. You know why you need it, Chrissy? Because guess what? Persecution is coming. Yes, Suffering is coming. Yeah, yeah. You're going to need yes, my spirit to get you to go up. Keep going even when they're whipping you. Yes. With words. And... You're going to need them. He says that so they went and met in the upper room. And you know what they were doing in the upper room? I ain't got to guess. They was getting matters solved. They were up there talking, men and women. They are talking about talking about what he did. And I'm sure there was probably some difference of opinion up right, there, brother. Right, right. You know, some people that offended you on a longer journey, mm. but God told you to meet at this place and you start saying, look, you know what? 
our unity is more important than that's that right. offense. That's right. That's right. I, I'm, I'm not going to text. I'm going to ask you right now, brother, will you forgive me yes. for what I said to yes. you and said about you? Will you forgive me? That's what they were doing. This is in them when they got on, on accord. That's right. So, so listen to me. Listen to me. Because he says, when they got on one accord. So what does that let you know, uh, April? At one point, they were what? Not on one accord. And God says, when we come on one accord in the spirit, he says, then the Holy Spirit comes down and empowers those. And they praise God. And spoken unknown tongues. Unknown to the but known to the unknown to man. And even when they spoke, the Spirit of God gave someone the interpretation. And the tongue was not about anything physical. Come on, right. Come yeah. on. It was praising God. That's it. That's it. Glorifying That's him for it. his works. Thanking him for all that he has done. Thank you, Jesus. For them. Yes, Lord. Because they realized that guess what? I didn't deserve it. Can I share something with somebody today? Peter was in the upper room. That's right. Yes, he was. Word of God says, Minister Coleman, Peter denied Jesus. That's right. Yeah. But he was still right. in the upper room. Yes, Many of them betrayed him, but he was still in the upper room. See, we're allowing what the enemy is telling us that God has done with us. Yes, God. But God says, if you're mine, yes, Lord. you're still in the room. But let me tell you something. When my spirit comes upon you, you will repent. Yes. You will confess. Yes. Yes. And then the Spirit of God will come upon you. And he says, You're going to praise me. That's right. You won't need a Fred Hammond song. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. you won't need a Matthew West song. You won't need none of those artists' songs. He says, My Spirit will flow in you. That's right. And you're going to open up your mouth. Hallelujah. And you're going to praise me. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I won't need any keys. My spirit is going to do it all. He says, and then when you do the work, I'm going to give you gifts. The scripture. The Bible says God gives gifts. Man doesn't. The scripture says, and he gave gifts. And he gave them. Now, Satan can give you some. But the gift that the enemy gives you and you too, you'll know it's from the enemy. Yes, that's right. Because you're going to benefit from that's it. Right. Yeah, that's right. it. Say it again. Thank you, Lord. You're going to have people paying you instead of praising God. Yeah. But freely you gave. Yeah. was given and freely you give. Yeah. So he says, so they, this is what they said today. The Spirit of God. He said, they just praise God. He said, they're on fire. Guess what they did? They went out and they started telling <laughs> others about what? Not City of Restoration Church, but what the Spirit of the Living God has done inside of me. But you don't know what I've done. Let me tell you something. I've done it too, but God still invited me to the room. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And once I resolved my issues with first of all God first and then man, I was filled with this Spirit. To do the works for him. I know it happened. How do you know you feel? Because I know what you said and done to me. And I forgive you. I know how much hurt. And I saw it. It happened to me. But I forgive you. You know why? I'm not forgiving you. It's the spirit that lives within me. Who reminds me. Just as God has forgiven you. You forgive them. They don't deserve it. Neither do you. God's love. And when you and I truly experience God's love, we'll be able to share with others. 
Amen. 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 Let us pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for your word today. We thank you for taking us and walking with us through the spirit of God, through exactly what Jesus the Christ has done for us. We thank you, Father God, for making it plain through the messenger of God, of your love for us. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Thank you for allowing us to see that. He gave Jesus the Christ to die on the cross for our sins. And you said whoever believes in him should not perish, but have what everlasting life? The life that's to come. Help us remove our focus as your children off of the things of this world, the laws of the world, and let us look to your law. And your, your law says, Father, forgive them. You said the greatest commandment is to love the Lord God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and strength. And you said the second one is to love your neighbor as I said. And these two commandments, you said all the other are wrapped up in these. Father God, today someone has made a decision, Lord God, to love you. To receive, Father God, the gift of Jesus Christ. To confess him as Lord and Savior. Father God, I pray the Spirit of God that you will speak unto them right now. I ask that your will be done in their life. And that they will truly experience you. Not feelings, or emotions but the power and the authority of the spirit of God in us. there are some today Lord God who laughed and mocked at your name who didn't believe Lord God that what you have accomplished what you've accomplished on the cross and the grave is real but now they believe I pray that you would remind them right now and encourage them by your spirit to just take that step of repentance. Realizing, Lord God, that it's love that is drawing them right now. It is love that will receive that call, that cry of repentance. And it's love that will comfort them in this time. I thank you, Father God, for your word today that, have, that has strengthened someone today and they'll walk with you. And I pray, Lord God, that when this service ends, that serving you will begin in their lives. They will not be concerned about what everybody else is doing, but they would, Father God, do what you've called for them to do. We thank you, Father God, for the gifts and the gifting. And we know, Lord God, that at the appointed time, you will use us to bring glory to your name. In Jesus Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. 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 I'm going to ask the praise team to come back up. Amen. I show some love for the praise team. Amen. 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 I'm going to ask the praise team to just minister a song. Amen. What song, Pastor? Whatever the Lord lay upon your heart to sing. Time to just be ready. Um, the Lord laid on my heart, and I'm not a singer, but while you were playing this earlier, and um, I 
I just want to start it off getting you. And it's just as simple as that to, to ask the Lord and you say, you know, Lord, give me you. And he's standing there ready. He's willing. But it's in our heart to say, Lord, I desire you. Tune in online. We pray that the Spirit of God spoke to you today and reminded you of God's love. And I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that we will respond to God's love. Respond to his love by faith. Amen.
You don't have to sing. I hope it's not too late. It's not too late. That's hallelujah. Our Lord and Savior stands ready to receive you. Remember, Peter denied, but he was still invited. That's right. Hallelujah. Yes, he was. And after the Spirit of the living God came upon him, restored him, he went hard. That's right. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. If you want to learn more about the ministry, please visit us at tcrchurch.org. You want to know where we're located? We're at 813 South WS Young Drive. I know God has spoken unto you. So go back to God and say, God, is this where you want me to be? And if it is, you're welcome to come in and be restored. God bless you and God bless you. Amen. It's offering time. Amen.